one by Hip Hop Madness. All right, so Kendrick Lamar tried to warn us about Drake's gang. Probably some gang in Canada, most likely, but let's find out. At the height of the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef, both men's affiliations and crews were called into question. In Drizzy's case, he had to face accusations that his crew was full of abusers. Meanwhile, Drake seemed to suggest that Kendrick's ties to the Bloods were nothing more than rumors and speculation. Even going as far to say that YG was one of the only rappers to really bang a set before he later realized that the relationship was strictly business. Declared a civilian and colonizer, the perception that Drake was a way softer guy than his rival K-Dot made sense. After all, one grew up in Compton, while the other spent their early years in the suburbs of Toronto. But if you dig a little deeper, it turns out that Drake, who's been telling the world that he'll make someone around him catch a body like that since 2011, might actually be deeper intertwined with Toronto's underworld. And when you dig even deeper, it looks like Mr. Yeah, no new friends car, has a bro. whole new entourage these days, and that's a far cry from the crew that he used to roll with. Nobody that I've ever considered a true friend has switched up. But these like fly-by-night people that you just come across, they're all not to be trusted. But to paint a picture, we need to take a look at Drake's original crew. Back when Drake emerged Makes on sense, the scene, so his friends, which consisted of Ob O'Brien, 40, Ovi O'Brien, Oliver, Future the Prince, and Chubbs, were easily identifiable. And it wasn't for how imposing they were. But over time, most of them have moved past their status as extras in Drake's music videos. To start, the co-founder of Drake's record label, Ovio Nico, was a first-generation Canadian whose parents moved from the Philippines. And now he co-owns the Scarborough Shooting Stars basketball team. Meanwhile, his longtime producer, OVO40, also oversees the label while Future the Prince, his touring DJ, and executive producer of Euphoria serves as his manager. From the outset, these men seem like genuine friends, and much like Drizzy himself, each of them were outliers in the hyper-masculine world of hip-hop as they were far more soft-spoken and honestly, kind of bordered on nerdy. Me and Drake got together <laughs> as friends. We were in a small city, Toronto. Well, it's not a small city, but uh, it becomes a very small city, and it was a small scene at that time. We got together because we were both young and being progressive and, and doing a lot of great things for our city. Over time, these men took on various leadership roles in the OVO framework, while others found themselves on the outside looking in. I don't know for example, all about this. OVO Brian show, was once seen as a promising so rapper things. in his own right with tracks like Steve Nash and Two On featuring Drizzy so himself. But allegedly, he got caught up with the feds on drug charges, as well as allegations that he, along with another former member of Drake's circle, might have been talking to underage girls. That man was OVO Ryan, Drake's real life God. cousin who was completely cut loose from oh, the crew. Accused of interfering with Johnny Manziel's career by always, quote unquote, bringing the party, he was allegedly allegedly called out for bringing underage girls to the Yellow Estate, as well as being a degenerate drug addict. Over time, the proximity to success went to Ryan's head, and Drake cut ties completely Oh, let me see. With Drake oh. seemingly referencing him on the track Losses. Then we have the head of Drake's security, Chubbs. Shouted out in the Thank Me Later liner notes where he said, Thanks for risking your life every day to ensure my safety. Chubbs was a one-man army at the outset of Drake's career. But even with Chubbs ready to risk his life for Drake, this wasn't enough to deter rappers from treating Drake like the soft kid from the six and essentially bullying him. Because of this, Damn. Drake was on the receiving end of violations that have since become the stuff of hip-hop legend. Oh, like yeah, the time a friend of T.I.'s urinated on his leg in a movie theater. That the shit wild. I've ever seen before in my life. The wild I've ever seen before in my life. But I ain't had no malicious intent. I don't see how I could ever be taken as a diss. I don't see how it could be. That would be someone uh, allowing their emotions to manipulate them if so. <laughs> Elsewhere, he was slapped by Diddy, which resulted in J. Cole of all people leaping to his defense. And to make oh. matters worse, he wasn't safe in his own city either. In 2009, he was robbed for $2,000 in cash, an Audemars Piguet watch, and a diamond chain Little Wayne had gifted him. I knew it wasn't set up because I had on a sweater and a jacket, but when they banged on the car window with a gun and opened the door, the first thing he said was, yo, run that chain. They didn't rob her, and her purse was sitting right there. So I was like, okay, yep, you set the whole thing up. But for Drake, this was a turning point. And in the track from Florida with Love, he discussed how people had their pistols loaded, pointed at my truck. And you know that lesson stuck. From that day, I never touched the road without a plug. From this exact moment, this marked the beginning of Drake's transformation and a crew to go with it. And soon, he was moving differently. With Chubbs in tow, Drake though. began adding a whole string of hard-edged characters to his entourage, including the infamous Baca Not Nice. Before the world knew him as the guy with the weird case, Baca was known as Drake's self-proclaimed goon. And on songs like No Long Talk, Drake leaned into his tough image, showcasing these new, edgy additions to his entourage. And in interviews, Baca confirmed that if things were to get crazy, he's the man who sent in to defuse the situation. You gotta understand something. If you're gonna disrespect my boss, my brother, my friend, or anybody on my team, I'm gonna feel offended. It would be weird if I if I did it. Those are my brothers. Those, mm -hmm. those are the men that I eat with. If he needs me, he, he will call. He me. Call. 
and soon his services would be enlisted as Drake began to act like a different man than the sensitive, thoughtful antidote to gangster rap that he once seemed to be. For starters, in 2014, you had petty situations like stripper Johnny Blaze and Atlanta IG model Shia G being harassed for exposing their encounters with Drake. In Johnny's case, she said it began with heated text messages from Drake before it progressed to members of his entourage banging on her door and threatening her life. As for Shia, her crime was simply showing off Drake's affectionate side, as he'd allegedly bought her designer bags. On top of incidents like starting fights with Chris Brown, Drake's newfound confidence led to incidents like producer Detail, who was offered the executive gig on Drake's album, being assaulted for refusing to exclusively produce for Drake. Supposedly, he arrived at Drake's home at 2am under the pretext that they were going to hop into the studio. And at this point, he was allegedly jumped by Chubbs, oh, who yeah. left him with a broken jaw. I will beat all your ass. That's in one of my other Drake videos, I remember that, you can go uh, check that out, but... I'll, I'll link it for the YouTube niggas. Including your chubs apparently said amidst the beatdown. I don't give a I will hit you again. Do you think Drake is soft? You think Drake's a punk? Detail says he was so badly hurt he couldn't work for a year, TMZ reported. He asked Drake repeatedly and in vain to cover his medical damn, expenses. Damn, and when Drake refused, Detail sued. Unfortunately, he wasn't even the last former music collaborator to be on the receiving end of violence. Because in 2016, Toronto rapper Mo G spoke out about OVO's business practices, claiming that he hadn't been fairly compensated for the work he'd done. Have you ever ever heard in the history of hip hop a man who's creativity and helps make billboard hits but doesn't get paid a dollar for it, one credit for it, and here stuck in the hood? That doesn't make sense. Oliver's a snake ass, double headed snake. Previously shouted out on Summer 16 as Mo G with the dance moves, it became apparent that clout wasn't enough for Mo, and he wanted to be compensated. And after a series of posts, OVO eventually paid him to make the problem go away, and all social media references to Drake were deleted. However, Mo wasn't done there, and when he didn't feel like he got enough money, he took things a step further and sought to unveil unreleased music of Drake's that he had a hand in. Just to let the world know, I never got paid no 12 grand. For the record, I'm not signed to OVO. Check the history. I always delete all my posts and I deleted it because I got a bigger info coming to you right now. As we Just days afterwards, Mo posted to his Instagram to reveal that he'd been on the receiving end of an assault and that he had been hospitalized, Damn. claiming that this is what happens when you speak from the heart. Hashtag dirty industry. Since then, Mo G's momentum has fizzled out, and he's since claimed that he's essentially been blackballed from his own city. Dear fans, am I being blackballed? For the past two years now, I'm banned from 99.9% .9 of studios in Toronto. I'm banned from all clubs. I'm banned from doing shows. I'm banned from doing appearances. Man, I know Drake hit that fucking stop button on that nigga shit, bro. I know he went straight, called every studio, like, hey, like, don't let that nigga in, bro. Like, it's crazy, bro. And for what? Like, why he, why he hate, bro? Drake is such a large figure out there, bro. Like, why hate on these little niggas, bro? Like, I don't even understand. Like, I, I man, I, I just don't get it, bro. Like, the nigga made so much money, bro. Why hate? Like, you got a little baby and, and dub baby walking around, and they they both find out about their names or whatever, and they were like, they had a little talk. They're like, you know what? There's, both, there's enough money for both of us. And it's like, why can't Drake be like that with these other niggas, bro? I don't understand. Like, I swear he's high key hating, bro. <laughs> like, I just don't get it. And when I get lucky and find a studio, engineers salt up my whole thing. They turn up the headphones, up on full blast on some hater, and they wonder why I stopped rapping for two years. There's no opportunity. It's simple. Suddenly administering beatdowns on the download, Drake's crew have continued to move like this ever since. In 2017, rumors about an altercation oh, yeah, between wrong. Graham and Drake started doing the rounds. Then, later in 2023, her loss, Drake seemed to gloat about what had happened, spitting. Tried to bring the drama to me. He ain't know how we cha-cha slide. Refusing to let this go unchecked, Dram revealed his side of the story. And just like every incident we've talked about so far, it was Drake's goons that put in the work for him. Somebody tell Drake to shut the <laughs> up about that, man. Five years ago, never even touched me. I pressed his ass. I ain't gonna hold you. His bodyguards went to town on the kid. But his bodyguards did not his He ain't well, touched me. Though. He's a You know that. Emboldened by his street ties, Drake soon started linking up with individuals from the Reps Up label, including G-Way and Galloway Boys Gang members like Gilla and P-Rain, as well as the late Anthony Fifth Soares, whose death Drake publicly mourned on Instagram. Furthermore, he was known to have ties with people such as the Triple G Gang and Halal Gang. With that, he only grew even more cocky, resulting in Kanye West tweeting in December of 2018 that Drake called trying to threaten me. The kid he had run on stage in Pusha's concert is in critical condition. So Drake, if anything happens to me or anyone from my family, you are the first suspect. So cut the tough talk. But Drake would do anything but stop. 
continue to play this new, well-connected life where he was desensitized to violence. Plus, courtesy of his ties to Jay Prince and Houston's Mob Ties crew through his early discovery by Jazz Prince, it was Kanye that would be soon backing down and asking to perform at a benefit show with Drizzy oh, yeah. as Jay Prince stood menacingly in the background. I'm making this video to address the ongoing back and forth between myself and Drake. Both me and Drake have taken shots at each other and it's time to put it to rest. I believe this event will not only bring awareness to our cause, but prove to people everywhere how much more we can accomplish when we lay our pride to the side and come together. I ain't gonna lie, bruh. Like, this looks like a hostage situation, bruh. I know it's probably, like, it had, I mean, that'd be intentional, but, bruh, like, this literally looks like a hostage situation. So if anybody believes this, like, come on. Or anybody believed that at the time. This is old now, but, bruh, like... Looking at that, I wouldn't have believed this at all. Like, just the way I need to stand in there, but. Now well versed in the ways of the streets, it's for this reason that he could watch Bennett Snipes get well done by Eunice Benjima without batting an eyelid. Sued by the victim for dramatic brain injury, as well as injuries to his back, neck, and shoulders. Following the attack, Snipes also alleged Drake gave him a throat slash hand gesture as he exited the VIP section before he was allegedly tacked while attempting to leave the restroom. From Halal Gang to the Triple G crew, Drake's reach in Toronto apparently knows no bounds now. As a result, when DJ Drama, who was seen as an instigator in the Meek Mill Drake beef back in the day, visited Toronto, he was robbed for his chain, and after they carried out the deed, they shouted out none other than Drizzy while flexing the stolen loot. This for you, bro. Get for not checking in. Shout out, boy, Drizzy, eh? You know how he rocks. But it isn't just Toronto's inner city gangs that Drake has ties to. Bizarrely, he's also apparently affiliated with the Toronto branch of the Hells Angels, the famed motorcycle club known for their violent ways and heavy involvement in organized crime. And this was exemplified when Rick Ross recently slid through Toronto, playing Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us. Oh, Immediately, so he was confronted by Hells Angels members and jumped. Later, his DJ Sam Sneak was also assaulted. Then it was revealed that the man who carried out the assault was none other than Andreas Terazakis, otherwise known as Icarus. His father, Anthony Big Tony Terazakis, who was affiliated and spent time in prison for trafficking drugs in the downtown east side of Vancouver, as well as numerous brutal assaults. Previously seen in a Hells Angel sweater from Toronto's Route 18 in a photograph alongside Travis Scott, Drake's flagrant use of their imagery led to Staff Sergeant Lindsay Houghton of the Toronto Police condemning his actions. Seen alongside his neighbor and Hells Angel affiliate, Andrew Kernow in the video Family Matters, it seems like like Drake oh, is really yeah. doing his most to not only maintain a profitable career, but also create a network of people who are ready to slide for him whenever required and in any state. So when the weekend's manager Cash XO's house is shot up just days after the recent gunfire at Drake's mansion, which led to a bodyguard being hospitalized, it almost feels like he's hiding in plain sight. Similarly, when Kendrick's pop-out concert attendees Roddy Rich and Schoolboy Q have faced sudden this show cancellations wild, and outright bans from Canada's borders, it really starts to put things into perspective. Like, I really didn't know this nigga Drake was really this connected, bro. Like, I thought it was all fluff, bro. But he actually, he actually got some dooms behind him, bro. That's, that's just wild, bro. It's crazy to know, bro. With Chubbs now being referred to as Capo today, which essentially means a captain in the mafia, it seems like there's a hierarchy at work, with Drake perched up right at the top. With ties to the Triple G's, Reps Up Gang, Notorious Gang, Hells Angels, Mob Ties, YSL, and even the Cedar Block Pyru Bloods, courtesy of the game, among many others, Drake's OVO sound is essentially the most connected and most powerful crew in hip hop. Is he the most? I'm trying to think of like, is there anybody else? I mean, like, they have like, no, I don't know. His might be like, well, like, he, yeah, definitely has like probably the best, well organized crew, that's for sure. Because he had to orchestrate that shit. Like, I mean, like, imagine his position back then when he was getting robbed or whatever, like, for the first time and shit like that. Like, and he had like the money to do so. Like, that man started a fucking empire on top of that shit. After being robbed once, he was like, yeah, never fucking again, bro. Like, he ain't, he's like making sure that nigga run in their pockets, bro. Like, that shit's wild. Well, then they just dumped an empire on their head, bruh.